everyone. I hope traders and investors alike were green Friday. I hope everybody had an amazing weekend. So we've seen a lot of rotation in the markets last week, especially toward the end of last week. Uh, we closed over 42.80, which was our resistance level we were watching on the S&P 500. So barely, but we got over it by two bucks and closed. And you can see we're moving into a, a lighter volume profile here. So we the volume shelf through here is lighter, and it gets that way up to about 43, high 60s, 43.70-ish area. Now, I'm not saying we're going to rush right up there and go straight there, of course, but, you know, that 4370, 4400 could be the next real, real target if we, if we continue to push. Um, definitely seeing a, a lot of the improvements in the market. Uh, breath, breath looks great, and there, there's definitely a change there, change in rotations. Uh, some of the weaker sectors like the material sector and the industrial sector, uh, nice moves on Friday, seeing rotations coming in there. Um, seeing rotations coming into a, a lot of the different sectors so let's get going through the charts and we'll talk about what we're seeing we don't have a big week coming up we don't have a lot of data you know pre pretty quiet week overall so let's get going through the charts we'll just talk price action and things that are going on as we get through the charts and we just talked about the spx or the s p 500 uh, that's the weekly, by the way. You can see here a very nice breath thrust. Uh, had a nice one on Thursday, but Friday took us into the 2000 there. Uh, definitely trend update there. U.S. dollar, we are seeing a reversal here. We we seen this really nice move up, a uh, big snatch down, and seen a piercing candle on Friday. See if we can get a move back up. It needs to clear your, your basically your tabletop up here or. Uh, the flagpole, basically resistance, we got to clear that action there. So I'm bullish on the dollar back above there. We'd rather see the dollar pull in for the market, but, you know, we got to take what we get. Uh, VIX, 52-week lows down there. I do want to point out one of the things that we've seen last week was every – for every week, the first trading day of the week, the VIX has been gapping up, and this has been happening for months. And last week was the first week that that did not happen. So little signs like that, the small details that we see in the market, that makes a difference. Oh, crude. Crude, nice strong move back up. Not sure it's really going to go anywhere, but we did get a nice bounce from down there. It looked like it was getting ready to snatch. Uh, Apple, Apple's been on a very nice trend up, uh, a slow grind. It's not really extended here. We are outside the Bollinger Bands, but we're not overly extended there. You know, very close to the all-time high there as well. Uh, Apple intraday, pretty tight action on Friday, but you can see the higher low. Uh, wasn't really able to push up and put in the higher high. Ran out of time. Uh, gold, we're bearish on gold down here. Bearish engulfing candle, but we got to get below that nine. So bearish on gold below the nine. Your MACD is rolling over. Uh, definitely showing a lot of weakness compared to the market there. If you compare the market to the S&P, that's the S&P's price action. And gold's definitely pulling back. The advanced decline lines turned up very nicely there. Uh, AMC, AMC's trying to, looks like it gapped up and then snatched back down. Uh, you can see it very rough, but there's a head and shoulders pattern there that's it's worked its way down. It's not textbook, but, you know, the formation's there and it's working. Uh, sometimes, you you know, following the textbook is great, but more about observance of the market and see how the market's acting right now as you're trading day, day for day. How's the market acting? How's, how, what are you seeing in these patterns? You know, uh, the market acts differently in different stages of the, of, you know, of market trends. So, you know, you got bull markets, bear markets, in between markets, and, and different patterns actually work differently, and they act it differently during all these different stages of the market. You can see AMD here, very nice uh, pullback Friday. We had a very, very nice pull, and then we pushed back up, and then it drifted back lower, provided some nice short opportunities there. Uh, Amazon rejected out of resistance on Friday. Arc, Arc, nice push here was able to close up above this area, so we're bullish as long as we hold the top of this candle. This kind of looks like an inside day here, gapped up and pulled back, but the bulls were able to take it back up. So I'm not really worried about that candle as long as we stay above Thursday's candle. I'm bullish on Arc. Nine's on its way up. AMD, AMD's trying to bounce off this daily nine. You can see the gap up and then the pullback. So it did sell off on Friday. 
and AMD's weekly chart, very dark cloud coverage there. That did not cover 50% or more. I like to see 67% of the candle, two-thirds of the candle, but, you know, textbook 50%, uh, that can work as well. But we didn't get it, but it's very, you know, it did gap up and, and didn't move into the previous candle's body. So Affirm, we're getting this breakout, another one. So up above the 200, so this is some of the stuff we're talking about rotating into. We can get a lot of these smaller names moving and industrial sector and stuff like that moving. Be huge for the market. Uh, by the way, the diamond was the – the diamond outperformed everybody on Friday. So the Dow Jones outperformed everybody. So that's a – considering the diamond has been pulling back, the Dow has been pulling back, uh, that's great to see the Dow – uh, performing like it did because once again showing rotation at Dow 30 but the Dow 30 you know it's kind of a big deal not as big as the S&P though so we got Amazon here been watching that very rough inverted head and shoulders breakout took the trend line out very strong watch this if it, we do continue higher watch your weekly 200 we're coming into it but we're coming into this big volume profile up here as well where we got this big vacuum gap so if we get up through here Got a lot less resistance in that area. We can move a lot freer. Apple weekly chart, very strong chart there. I mean, just an incredible chart. Boeing, Boeing, nice candle on Friday. This was a one, two, three reversal. We talked about this. If we could just take that, you know, the pivot point two area out, we called this out while I was down here. But to watch that one, two, three reversal there. Bitcoin, Bitcoin stuck in between a mess of moving averages there. The weekly nine is resistance. And you can see the channel here as well into some resistance here. This has acted as support below a previous level of support becomes resistance. You can see it was resistance there. And we're struggling down here now as it's moving average are trying to move lower. It would be nice to see Bitcoin move up and or you know push up and join the market. Uh, Boeing intraday, very nice push on Friday there. Give a very nice trade. CVX, instead of breaking below this kind of uh, inverted cup and handlish pattern here. Uh, we did not move below, end up pushing back up on Friday. So that's a good sign. Let's keep an eye on some of these energy names. Energy also performed well on Friday, considering it's been very beat down. So having a lot of these beat down sectors performing, starting to show some some life in the markets, which we still need. It can't just be a one day push on those names and then just drop tomorrow. Even though there's a good chance we're going to pull back tomorrow and we're going to talk talk about why when we get to the spy chart. XLC, the communication sector, still pushing higher. We call it that break. That's a, if you haven't seen this chart before, uh, we just zoomed it out. But this is a large year long inverted head and shoulders. So we're expecting a decent move there. Uh, XLP pushing back up very strong. Very strong candle on the consumer staples and consumer staples have been beat down pretty good. So seeing that rotation into that, great uh, cost. Cost is closed about, what, four four candles now out of this. So we were watching this volume profile area, and you can see it's already changing. Um, so we liked it outside of this box, which we are outside of the box looking for a move up there. DraftKings back up above the 9 and 20. We talked about this, and I just simply said I wouldn't want to be the first one to short it. Uh, DDOG, we got a breakout here, a gap up, and it given it back, they did have earnings. So we need to keep an eye on this name. Uh, we were bullish on it because it's a contraction pattern. Need to see how we act up there. Now we got a gap. We could fill that gap. The MACD looks like it wants to swoop, swoop back open and push higher. So let's see what we get. A uh, lily, we talked about that bear flag down here and end up. We also talked about look for rotations in these rotation into these stocks, even though it was having a bear flag. Uh, said we wouldn't want to be the one to short it. We were looking for rotations back into some of these names, and we got that uh, Thursday and Friday. XLE, two decent days, good green days there, and a nice move up on Friday back above the 9 and 20 on the daily. See if we can hold them. Google, Google's trading in this little ascending triangle there. See if we can get a breakout and push up. Uh, IWM, strong move on the 15-minute, the intraday start chart, very strong move. Nice rotation there on Friday. Q's still grinding higher, strong chart, has been the leader. Uh, Q's, well, like I say, the, the Dow did lead on Friday, though. So we did see a lot of rotation there, and it was the Dow leading. Q's intraday, very, very tight. tight. Tight action there on Friday. Q's weekly, 
kind of uh, tower top, not tower top, kind of uh, hangman up here. So let's see what we get. Uh, to me, this is still bullish because at one time the bears had brought this candle all the way back and the bulls were able to push this candle back up and give us a, uh, a hangman up there. LVS, LVS, we had this little H cell pattern that never formed. We never got a candle to break below that line. It provided some some quick trades down as long as you were trading short or trading quickly and wasn't trying to get a trending trade, but we never got the confirmation for a trending trade and it is pushing higher. Mara looking for a breakout. I'm not interested in this until it breaks out of that box, but when you're contracting that tight, when you do break out, you usually get a very nice move. So expecting a move, we need need to break out. Plan A, plan B. It can go north, it can go south, and we will trade it either way. Merck moving higher off this bullish engulfing candle. Nice, nice push there, seeing a rotation. Uh, meta. Meta, you can see outside of the bands kind of pushing back in, back outside of the band, struggling right there on the band. We could come back in. You can see every time it gets out, it works its way back in back to the band and it's just the way it works so i would keep an eye for a move back down to the nine see if we can get another bounce off that nine meta intraday very tight on friday microsoft nice little flag break here uh still a tight range there on friday as well nice strong move at market opened in pull back and then it provided some trades at the end of the day there was some chop there that that we needed to you know respect and stay out of Microsoft uh, closing on the week with a, a dragonfly or a long-legged doji. That's more of a long-legged doji. It's not a dragonfly. NVIDIA holding this gap well. I'm going to watch this gap for support. So we do have gap support. If we move into the gap, then we'll look for a possible gap fill. But for now, we're holding that gap support. Uh, NVIDIA did pull back on Friday. Very each cell pattern is there that never really triggered. The video weekly got this topping candle here on the video weekly looking for a move back into the Bollinger Bands or the BBs to catch up kind of got a little excited there outside of the BB. So like, we could see a move back in doesn't mean we're going to snatch back completely. Uh, the NASDAQ really nice move up here kind of flagged in didn't even make it to the short term nine and still pushing higher. You can see volume profiles lighter up there. So support resistance is lighter up here. Netflix. Holding in well, up this very nice gap up, holding in very well. We did get back into the Bollinger Bands. Uh, just an inside candle there. It is a bearish Harami, but not really too worried about that. It, you can see the they did pull it back, and the buyers were able to, to push the candle back high to give us a spinning top. The short-term nine is on the way up. We're holding that gap. As long as we hold that nine and we're above that sh that daily nine, you know, it's hard to be bearish on it. But we could see a pullback to to the nine, and we could see that through, you know, with a lot of these stocks as well. Qs we're above on the monthly. We are above the sixty-one point eight. The month just started, but right now we are above the sixty-one point eight uh, fib level for the year. Uh, Robolex seeing rejection here at this gap. Got that little cup and handle there, trying to break out of the pattern to the downside. Uh, SPX daily, strong candle there. Very strong move up on Friday. SoFi, still watching this one for the student loan uh, information to come out. Supreme Court, of course, uh, decisions. But just want to know when those payments will start being due, and we could see some uh, spike on the stock then. Holding in very well. Uh, very hangmanish up here. Just got a good MACD, need to get back into the Bollinger Bands. We could see a pullback there just coming back into to the Bollinger Bands. The Diamond, very strong candle here. We said, you know, the Dow was the leader on Friday, strong candle on a daily, strong candle on the weekly, pushing back up into the rounded top there on the weekly. Spy weekly, strong, closed up above this 425, 426 area. You can see we are on the monthly chart. We're above the 61.8 here as well, FIB level. And SPY daily, huge push up. We do have a gap here, so we could see a pullback to fill that gap in tomorrow. SPY intraday, very nice push up. But after that initial push, the momentum had kind of went out of it. It was tradable, but depending on your strike, watch how you trade if you're trading options, depending on your strike, of how hard that could have been. We don't need to sit in these positions, and positions should not bring us pain.
Square pushing higher, back above all your, well, still got the 200 up here, but back above the 9, the 20, the 50, the 9, and 20, turning up. 9's coming up quickly. Nice push there on the square. CRM, CRM holding the 20. Still, that 9 is resistance. Your daily 9 is resistance there, holding the 20. Shop, still under that downtrend. Rate it. It's actually below both of the 9 and 20 on the daily there. Not really, you know, we need to see this break this down trend up or get into the gap on the way down. It's got gap support down there as well. Uh, Tesla had a decent push on Friday. Did give some of it back. Uh, XLK kind of tried to flag into the 9 and trying to push up there. Not much of a move. Pretty tight action on Friday. Tesla's weekly. We took out this triple top area. Pushing up, we're back above that weekly 50 as well and close so we got confirmation up there we got a good macd coming on looks like the chart wants to move higher look at this we've got four closes up above this 200 up above this trend line above the 200 the nines on its way up i'm not saying we won't pull back and retest matter of fact your conservative trader is going to be looking for that pullback and that's where he's going to be retest looking for a retest at but that's a very nice chart chart does look like it wants to go up nice macd you got a zero line uh crossover re zero line reversal there not really the textbook zero line reversals when it comes down, bounces off the, and then pushes up. I like to see them come below and then push back up through the zero line. Uber trading in this rectangle, closed outside of the box on Friday. So what do we need here? We need a candle to open up outside of this box and push higher than this candle. We need a candle to come in, gap up, and give us a gap and go situation. MACD is changing character there. Walmart. This is three green crows, uh, or three stars to the south, as I like to call them, but three green crows. Uh, you have your second candle, you know, that opened up within the first candle body's range, push higher. Your third candle opened up within your second body's candle range and pushed higher. Your third candle is your biggest, strongest candle of the pattern. You can see uh, shorter wicks here, so we got a stronger candle. Close strong. We do need to clear this 50. If we can get above this 50 daily, we're looking for a move up to the, the daily 20. If we can take the daily 20 up, we're going to look for a move back up. Nice rotation there as well, seeing them come back into Walmart. Uh, the banks, strong candle on Friday. Got Kind of got this double bottom area down here. I, I need to be above this, preferably above this 200. I, I just want to get out of this range before I'm too interested into the banks. A TLT, very evening starish here. We had a nice push up on the bonds. You've seen rejection up here, back below that 200. We need to watch, I'm sorry, back below the 20. We need to watch the 9. The 9 is turning up, see if that'll hold for support. IWM weekly, we called this out uh, two weeks ago. We talked about this foot. We were looking for an 8-cell pattern, never confirmed. We got this candle here that closed up. Said this is starting to resemble a foot, heel, arch, ball of your foot, toes pointing up. Means we're going to break to the upside. And we cleared all the weekly moving averages. And on the daily, we cleared all the daily moving averages with another strong bullish engulfing candle there. It's not really a bullish engulfing candle because we didn't engulf the previous candle. We gapped up and gave us a strong Marbuzo candle. Very strong with a strong close on volume. Keep an eye on IWM. Rotation, rotation, rotation. And our put-to-call ratio is in 76. We are in the neutral zone. Our oscillators look really good as well. Strong push on the NASDAQ at 153. Getting a little warm there, but we got plenty of room to move in either direction. You can see we have done it in the past. Of the New York Stock Exchange, Positive 126. So we have seen a very strong push there. So plenty of room to move in either direction. And that concludes our video for today. I hope you find this helpful, and I'll see you in the trading room.